So today we're going to be talking about the solid principles. Um, the solid principles of our um, software design. So if we think about software design, we think of bridges, we think of architecture, and all these things. Um, and solid is just sort of like um, related to that. The first principle is the uh, single responsibility principle. And that says that a class should only have uh, one reason to change. Now, if we consider a repository uh, class, it might have get car, add car, delete car, and update car. Um, but when you think about it, they're actually, they're four different things. If you look at CQRS, the command query response separation pattern, you know, these really should be four separate classes, all doing a distinct thing. Um, so maybe we'd be better off to adhere to single responsibility. We might have a car query class that would be uh, would do the get car. Uh, we might have an add uh, car that would be the add car. Um, that would be a command in CQRS, <laughs> a command query. The next uh, principle is the open close principle, OCP, like Robocop. Um, what that states is a class shouldn't be open for modification but it should be open for extension so if we have a class or an I class imagine like a car pricing uh, class um, it might expose a get price uh, method now it might be that we've written the code in such a way that when we look at um, a car we access some property to decipher oh if it's a Ford we'll give it one price and if it's um, a voxel, we might give it another. We, by being open to extension, we would never have to modify that code. We'd in infer instead um, look at invent a car pricing with discounts, and um, that logic would be retained in there. So we can extend the system, but without modifying it. Uh, Liskov substitution principle. Uh, this states that you know classes should be uh, substitutable for one another so if we go back to the repository pattern imagine the i get car interface it could be uh, we implement a sql get car or a no sql get so we might use redis or whatever other store uh, that's the liskov substitution principle the next is the interface segregation principle isp like your internet provider and what that says is similar to liskov really is that um, an interface should only denote one thing. If you think of a, an I repository, by having a get car and add car, it's, it's got two responsibilities. If I wanted to implement a Lucene uh, car repository, if I wanted to get things from a Lucene index, as opposed from a SQL store, I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd have to only implement one of these things. I'd only implement get car. So if we had an I get car and an I add car, then uh, Lucene uh, repository or the Lucene get car could just solely implement I get car. So interface segregation principle. The next is the dependency inversion principle or DIP. What that says is um, if you think of the normal flow of an application, you've got your web app, your business logic, and your data access. And there's your dependent, the web app's dependent on business logic, and the business logic is dependent on your data access layer. But what we really want is that abstract business logic to be the center of our application. And we don't think it should have any dependencies on anything else, especially the data access, because that could change. We might go from SQL to Lucene or Mongo or whatever. So what we do is we invert the, um, the dependencies. So everything points towards the domain or the business logic. And then we can swap out the web app, replace it with console app, and there's nothing wrong with that. Similar, similarly, we can replace SQL with Mongo, and that's the dependency inversion principle. Thank you.